Good day and welcome to this edition of Press A. Last week, uh, the Cameroon Football Federation succeeded in signing a four-year contract with Mrs. Sidov and Cluvet to handle the training of the Indomitable Lions, right? That's the build-up to next year's African Nations Cup and qualification for the World Cup and the 2021 uh, Nations Cup as well. So those are the key assignments which uh, those two uh, Dutch players or former players have, and they say they are going to make us proud. I mean, Cameroon. Let's look forward and see what they do. Um, there was also much in terms of the build-up towards election with the Constitutional Council examining petitions filed in by candidates whose uh, files were rejected by the uh, elections governing body in the country, Elections Cameroon. And these, including, of course, the running story on the uh, meeting of uh, all Anglophones, uh, convened or championed by uh, the Cardinal and some other authorities in Boya, including, of course, the running story on the candidates that have been retained by the elections governing body to run for the Constitutional Council. We choose the last two subjects to be handled on the program today, with our guest coming in from Boya and uh, from Yaoundi here. We have Matute Mignole. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe. And Thanks there is... Uh, Joseph uh, Wino of Media Africa, Media Africa. Yes, Media Africa. Media Africa Radio. Yes. In Boya, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, that barista Mujem Format, you're welcome. Thank you. You'll give us the legal aspects of some of the complications which we could not handle last week when we were talking about the projected meeting of all Anglophones in Boya. And um, also what the elections governing body did earlier on in the week, that was on Tuesday. We're waiting for Emmanuel Tumanjong of uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal. He'll be joining us in the course of the program. But let's set the ball rolling with what the papers were writing this week. Our press review. Emmanuel Abiemia. The continuous escalation of violence in the two English regions, wherein the population live in perpetual fear, once again took the attention of most newspapers this week. The Post headlines, fresh gun battles between troops, gunmen cut off Bello. It reports that the SDF chairman, Frundi, and corpses that were heading for burial were blocked from entering Bello, and this crossfire saw a woman give birth to twins. The voice rather decries terror in Menchu division with four gendarmes killed, two beheaded, and the Menchum Valley Dio abducted. But the interest of the Guardian Post is on the planned All Anglophone Conference 3, which the lone English daily report is suffering major internal setbacks with key initiators like Al Haji Mohammed Abubakar pulling out and telling government that there is a hidden agenda behind the conference which could fuel the crisis. The paper further reports that Tumi and Munzi contract each other over the All Anglophone Conference 3. Thus, at a time, breaking news is questioning, is there a need for AAC3? The paper describes the conference as a waste of time that will not produce desirable results. The Horizon newspaper, on its part, then takes interest on the cry of the CDC GM to Anglophones saying they are committing suicide by destroying the second biggest employer. While 15 health districts out of 18 in the southwest region are reported by the Guardian Post to have been crippled by the Anglophone crisis, the paper equally reports that the World Council of Churches has urged government to end gross rights violation in the northwest and southwest region. The lone bilingual daily Cameroon Tribune brings to the fore the views of Cameroonian bishops condemning violence in the two regions, but the Guardian Post sees the Catholic bishops as rather tasking government to investigate the killing of Boya priest while announcing that a reverend sister, Sister Roberta, has been shot in Ginicom as she was visiting her family but says she is responding to treatment. This at a time the Minister of Decentralization, Paul Atanganji, is promising more arrests for diaspora sponsors of the Anglophone crisis. The presidential race also caught the attention of most newspapers this week. The post weekend headlines battle for it to begins as a Lekam set stage. The paper questions between old guards and daring youths who will triumph. 
Cameroon Tribune is rather concerned with the number of candidates in the race. Nine, the paper reports, were retained with a detailed profile of each made available. The Post newspaper rather publishes the list of prominent political parties aiming for an opposition coalition ahead of the October 7 poll. But the Guardian Post reports on a petition received by the Constitutional Council to disqualify BS candidacy while announcing the departure of SDF Celestine Jamin to join the Cameroon Renaissance Movement. The third CAF mission to Cameroon to inspect stadia and hotel facilities ahead of the 2019 total AFCON also occupies a good chunk of newspaper columns with Cameroon Tribune announcing that the team will meet with a local organizing committee at the end of their visit. This at a time other newspapers are announcing the arrival of Dutchmen Clarence Sidov and Patrick Kluver as coach and deputy of the national football team, the Indomitable Lions. We end our press review on this story on the Horizon newspaper that reports that the Boya Mayo, Patrick Ikema, has excommunicated himself from the PCC, accusing the moderator of impersonation. Until we meet again, have an hour with the press. Thank you, Emanuela, uh, and welcome, Emmanuel. We will begin with you, and uh, the conveners of uh, the all or the Anglophone General Conference have uh, decided to postpone it to November. Uh, is there any problem with the timing uh, from your own reading? Yeah, apart from or was there? Yeah, it, it seems there is a problem with the timing. Secondly, um, there are discrepancies occurring shortly after the announcement by the government and some other. Uh, stakeholders like the mayor of Boya, who says who has refused that the, the conference should not hold in Boya, that's his territory. But I think some other observers are saying that that, that was not his duty. However, we hear that he's going to file a complaint officially to the government to postpone the or to cancel the uh, the conference. And yesterday or so, no, two days ago, I, I got information that the cardinal has postponed the um, conference, which was supposed to hold on the 20, 29th and. 30th of this month to uh, uh, 28, 29 to the 21st and 22nd of, uh, of November. November, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think, and the, cap the cabinet said it will take s some more time, you know, to uh, arrange the organization of the program of the, the conference. Opponents of uh, that initiative say uh, uh, pro uh, postponing its holding will be prolonging the agony. Yeah, uh, prolonging the agony, yes and uh, no. Uh, yes, because uh, I think that uh, so many people are uh, tired of uh, what is, has been going on, this uh, so-called uh, Anglophone uh, problem. Uh, but at the same time, I believe that uh, the timing certainly had a little uh, hitch, uh, uh, considering the fact that uh, the uh, presidential elections to the around the corner and uh, putting all of this together and... Uh, I believe that is a, a little bit uh, delicate and uh, difficult I was to thinking, handle the yes. two at the same time. I would have been thinking that uh, bringing peace will facilitate the holding of the election if we were. But that would have been that, that at least, at least, uh, if this uh, the anglophone come together, the press was called well ahead of time before the announcement of the elections. That's uh, what I mean to say. That would have been a wonderful. Uh, that would have been a wonderful initiative because even the conveners, uh, they say they don't have enough, they've not had enough time to put uh, things together uh, to be able to have an effective and a successful uh, come together. Okay. Um, Joseph, there are others who think uh, that um, uh, the, the, the validity of such a crucial meeting might be killed by time. Given that it's, it will be, might be coming about three or four, three months uh, after the initial idea was floated, I beg to differ with uh, those who hold that opinion because I think, uh, like what um, just said, the timing, the initial timing, which was uh, the 29th and the 30th of August, let's not forget elections slated for the 7th of October, just a week after that, it wasn't the very best. So I think, uh, just like the arguments that the conveners of the conference themselves have raised, they had not put together all that which was necessary for this uh, particular come together to be successful. So I think it is a rational uh, move 
to move it a little further, let's, uh, you would agree with me that elections period is a very delicate moment in the life of every country. It was supposed to be coming about one month or so, one month or more before the election. Did yeah, not if just it were one through. month or so before mm -hmm. the elections, it would have been good. But given that there's no time again and elections are already around the corner, I think it's the right move, uh, moving it. Uh, to the 21st and the 22nd so of November after the elections. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the blood will become sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, there's a lot of controversy here over um, uh, the uh, statements made by the uh, municipal authority of the Boya Municipal Council, the Lord Mayor, to be more precise. And uh, there are many people who think uh, that uh, such uh, pronouncements were not welcome. Others said it was good, and so on and so forth. But the point here, we deal with what the law says. Who issues authorizations in a meeting like what the uh, cardinal is convening? Uh, the law is uh, very clear, and it's, it, the law is unambiguous on this topic. Authorizations to for public manifestations, meetings, are within the competence of the senior divisional officer. The divisional officer the, or the, the senior divisional officer? The senior divisional officer. Okay. Um, we should, to, for us to be able to understand, maybe we'll try to look at, uh, we'll take a few steps behind to understand the, uh, the, the, the raison d'etre of that particular law. You should know that the senior divisional officer is an arm of the administration. Public order Public order is an issue of the administration. In other words, it's the executive. Mm -hmm. um, a mayor is voted under the banner of a political party. It is true that once, once you, a mayor, you become a mayor for the whole nation, but it does not change the fact that you were voted under a particular political program. And um, that program may not exactly be the same like that of the administration. And so... We, this one, it might not pose a problem when the mayor is uh, of the ruling party, but we take an incident where the mayor is of the opposition. You will see that it will be difficult to confine public order into the hands of a mayor who has a political ad agenda that would, might be different from that of the government. So saying that the mayor has nothing to do with authorization for public meetings and the public rallies. It is completely out of his competence. That is purely an aspect of the administration or the executive. Now, um, uh, when you say what you say, uh, I might be tempted to let um, I'm tempted to ask this question: um, If that is fully within the responsibility of the administrative authority of uh, the said uh, administrative uh, uh, setup, then you, you talked about public manifestations and meetings. meetings. Would you liken that to a public manifestation or a meeting as such? No, the law says, the law on the, um, the 1990 Liberty Law is clear on this. A public manifestation is when you want to move, you, have, you want to rally people to march on the street. Okay. While a meeting is when you are rallying people to sit on the spot and deliberate. Okay. And the law says if you are organizing a public meeting, public meeting means it is meeting in a public place open to everybody you simply do a declaration okay. to the administration and then you proceed with a meeting okay. but the, if, that you, is have if you have to sit in a, in, in a given, in local, a given in a locality, location, location you simply mm -hmm. do what they call a declaration okay. to the administration and then you carry on with the meeting because the law says once a declaration is done the administration is supposed to give an attestation immediately okay. that the declaration, declaration has been made um, if you intend to match, mm -hmm. then you have to ask for an, for an authorization. Okay. And that then other, interesting. And, yeah, another key point is that they say public meeting, public place. So if uh, you are having a meeting at your residence, mm. you don't need any declaration. Okay. You go ahead and hold your meeting. Okay. Now, w um, would you, if the, such a meeting is held within the premises of a local congregation, Will you call it a private or a public uh, uh, place? No, by virtue of the fact that it's a congregation which is open to the public, I think that should be a public place. Okay, which means that uh, the it, there prior to the meeting, there must be a declaration. That's right. Okay. So uh, if uh, the cardinal and uh, co, who are championing uh, that meeting, want to hold it within the premises of a, of, of a church, then they just make a declaration. A simple declaration. Okay. Thank you very much for that um, declaration, except you want to add one or two things? Yeah, I just want to add that um, many observers are asking why the elections are holding in a country which is, uh, you know, in, in grief, like the crisis in the two English-speaking regions. Um, observers are asking why they couldn't have postponed the 
uh, uh, presidential elections to say one year and try to get the problem resolved instead of holding elections before coming to look at the problem. It poses a big problem. If at all, for instance, the mayor went on a quickie note to say, like, stop the... Uh, uh, to, to try to halt the, the, the holding of the conference. It's simply because if he is under hot fire here. He, had hot, he has hot potatoes on his hands, whereby he's trying to fight to, keep, to see whether st stability could be in the, in, in the locality, and as well as trying to stop what could have triggered into another movement, you know. So the idea is many observers are asking maybe the president should have postponed the elections before trying to get and then try to get a solution to the crisis before coming back to the elections because already we've seen legislative elections suspended they have, they have been postponed by a year or so so this should have been the same case with the presidency however i think the, the one of the major things is that in cameroon the head of state is so powerful that even if it takes any uh, decision to run whatever uh, um, activity like especially in politics, it will only be followed. But now, as, as is still, the elections holding at this period will still create crisis in the English-speaking region. Okay. Um, uh, 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 um, let me, maybe uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the legal mind would uh, clarify some of those things. Um, the pre within uh, the, 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 the law, what does the law say? Does the law give the President of the Republic uh, the ability to, to pro postpone presidential election? Uh, when we look at the law carefully, there is a, it clearly stipulates how and when to postpone other elections. But with the presidential elections, the law does, does not really give the room okay. for postponing. So you now understand the legality of the decision of the President of the Republic? That is at the discretion of the head of state. No, it cannot be when the, law, the, doesn't, law, the, law, when the law doesn't <laughs> permit him. That's why uh, he postponed the legislative and uh, council elections. That is within his competence, uh, his competence as provided for by the law. And it wasn't because of uh, the crisis. But if I followed uh, Elekam well, the board chair of Elekam says that elections will hold in all the 58 divisions and 360 council areas in the country, which means the other uh, people on the ground and they are certain about what they are saying, isn't it? Yeah, they, they probably know what they are counting on uh, exactly. because uh, sometimes uh, if, if we see what is uh, going on in uh, parts of uh, the southwest and northwest, uh, we begin to doubt whether it will be that uh, easy. But uh, if uh, those who are responsible for organizing the elections uh, say that uh, they are sure that they will hold in all the 58 uh, divisions, then they do exactly what they are counting on. And okay. How and they are um, going to go in spite it. of the, uh, the withdrawal of uh, one of the conveners, uh, the cardinal and co say uh, the meeting will go ahead uh, after everything. Well, uh, we've seen the, they've held the grounds because from the very onset when it was announced, we had uh, voices from different corners, those who were declaring support for the move and others were condemning it. And they stood their grounds and made it clear in several press outings that it was going to take place. And we think it's expedient because when we look at the situation on the ground and uh, we've had uh, political figures like uh, Ayapola Bine, uh, Edith Kabanwala, who equally voiced their uh, support for the move. And uh, if we look across the board, well, you might want to ask me what measurement I took to get that, but several Cameroonians of English-speaking expression are of the opinion that there is a need for such a gathering like this to be convened. Let's not forget several people have asked if there is to be a, a, a dialogue, who would dialogue with who, on what, and that is the reason that for this, the cardinals and the other conveners made it crystal clear that it was to come to a consensus as to who can represent the uh, aggrieved population, Let's we're talking about the English-speaking regions of the country, and what are the issues that they will dialogue? I think it sets the pace for a dialogue, and it's expedient that such a conference takes place. Thank you, Joseph. Okay, let's move away from that subject, but through this kicker on uh, the publication of the list of uh, uh, the uh, postulants of uh, Unity Palace come November, uh, October this year. So who picks the ticket, the final ticket of the confidence of Cameroonians uh, next October 7. Already, Elections Cameroon has set the ball rolling with the selection of nine of uh, the 28 uh, candidates, given that one we drew, uh, that's 27 uh, candidates, but they have filed in petitions. We'll be examining that. But let's uh, listen to Ebenezer Kanga on the publication of the list last Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you. 
making public the list, the chairman of the electoral board of elections, Cameroon Elekan, Eno Abrams Egwe, said that out of the 28 candidacy files which were submitted, one candidate, that is Isaac Fuzu, withdrew his file. So the electoral board actually scrutinized the files of 27 candidates. The files of nine candidates were retained for the election, while 18 orders were rejected for various reasons. The candidates declared qualified to run for the presidential election are Bia Paul of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, Garga Haman Aji of the Alliance for Democracy and Development, Kamto Maurice of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement, Libi Lingenge Cabral of the National Union for Integration, Thoughts, Solidarity, Matomba Serge Espoir of the United People for Social Renovation, Muna Akere Tabeng of the Popular Front for Development, Ndamjoya Adamu of the Cameroon Democratic Union, Ndifo Afangwi Franklin of the Cameroon National Citizen Movement, and Osi Joshua Nabangi of the Social Democratic Front. The deliberations were characterized by serenity and a lot of solemnity. Uh, also, I want to appreciate the members of the board who took time to study the files so well. It's taken a long time, but it was very important. I think uh, the results that we have is only a reflection of the brilliant job that has been done. The electoral board has respected the time provided by the electoral court to publish the official list of candidates for the election. In, in 2011, we had 23 candidates. In 2018, we have nine. Um, there are observers who think that the number is still, that there are still many, than, and that, that will confuse electors in the process. And that's why they are saying other, other parties have uh, queued up behind the CPDM candidate, and they are saying that if, if it... If they were, were to have two, three candidates who permit the electors to make a better choice. But does that hold an argument of that nature? <laughs> it's for me, for me uh, I think elections in Cameroon have been determined. I've covered elections in Cameroon, whether legislative, council, or presidential, since um, um, the very first multi party elections. So generally, the elections went from the beginning. Since '92, you saw that uh, there's, there's still been quarrelling on who won the elections. Today, for the last part of the, the last, um, I think three or four elections presidential that, are, that I've held, you discover that it is the incumbent that wins. There's no doubt that he will win this time. Uh, but if we look at what is happening, if you look at the change, the dynamics, which have not yet, yet gone into operation, the two main, main candidates that look, the two main candidates that look into who can win the election so far will be perhaps that of the SDF or maybe uh, of it's the ruling party. Th that will be the assessment of the journalists uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that you are without yes. necessarily a, a feel there's no opinion pool that you've been able to carry out to be able to determine what you're saying. But all the same, I give you the benefit of the doubt <laughs> and, 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 and ask uh, whether you have any surprises in terms of the names that have appeared on the final list. No, we are happy with the fact that first, the, the are new, they are, they are, like within the, the current, um, or the main opposition, uh, OC is some somebody who came up to a surprise because nobody thought that uh, the SDF will, the Fundi will leave the power to another candidate. You have Cabral Libibi, who is a journalist and who is also a, ju a jurist, who has been very, very, you know, very much present on the media, especially the social media, and even on the, uh, audio and uh, the, the print media, talking about how elections should be held, why people should register and vote. Because the power of every, every election is on the fact that the more the, the, the voters, the more the elections become more, uh, you know, more interesting and perhaps more agitated and perhaps could pull weight from one candidate to another. You have Akere Muna, who is a very salient uh, jurist as well, a, a, a lawyer, you know. Akere Muna is, is well known worldwide. But the point is, we wonder whether he can work out something, you know, that can shake the system. One of the things is, 
people see uh, the, the, uh, Bakaremona like somebody who is a, a hidden arm of the government in one way or the other because he's been consultant for the government on the on the judicial issue on judicial issues. Okay. It makes it, uh, you know. Does that not give him a, a better understanding of the system and see how he can break it instead? Making be having better understanding does not mean that you can w you can win the incumbent. Instead, somebody like Libby or OC can be the incumbent, and many people feel that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. uh, in terms of in terms of the way elections have been, if there are going to be changes, because these are people with new ideas in the elections. Okay, uh, that's your opinion, uh, Matute. Any surprises? The nine. Well, in a system like uh, ours, I think that is a bit uh, difficult uh, because. Uh, you mean I my question? I, I think that is a bit difficult to be to talk about uh, surprises. First of all, I want to say that uh, when you look at the facts that uh, we have uh, that are handy, you realize that uh, the CPDM candidate will naturally uh, stand out as uh, a clear favorite because, wow. because of the, the way the party is uh, uh, implanted in, in the country. And, uh, of course, if we even look at the number of mayors, the number of uh, parliamentarians, the number of uh, councillors, all those uh, details, they are overwhelmingly put them together. It's more than 8,000 compared to maybe close to 800 and something for the uh, SGF. And some of the parties and their candidates, they have just uh, maybe two. Okay. Two representatives. I'm, I'm sick. I mean, uh, Joe. Now, but we are in a system where we respect and vote principally for our our party, a candidate of a, a given uh, party. We've not yet got into that uh, that uh, level where sometimes we are objective enough to to say that this person maybe is of uh, a different party, but will you call that party loyalty or or? Uh, voting uh, that's party loyalty or that is what they claim that it is uh, but sometimes sometimes we even can vote even for for somebody who who is blind because it belongs to our party and so that's why I say that it is difficult for us to <laughs> to, to think that uh, people will cross from their own party and easily vote for for other candidates. Okay, uh, let me take you uh, let take you back a little bit to uh, the phenomenon. I call it the Northwest phenomenon during the senatorial elections. Uh, the CPDM had a clear cut majority in terms of councillors, but they lost the election in the Northwest. Exactly. They lost the elections, yes, but those are very rare cases. They are very, very rare cases that uh, we've recorded because we've seen what has been happening repeatedly at the level of the National Assembly. Uh, ideas, they come up, but they cannot go anywhere because, uh, let's say, for example, the CPDM has a crushing uh, majority, majority okay. and all in the name of uh, party discipline. discipline. Okay. Uh, Joseph? Yeah, uh, very often when you talk to the man on the street uh, on issues concerning elections, there is an expression that usually comes forward that, well, whatever we do, we already know who would win. I think uh, they talk, when they say that they are making allusion to the advantages that come with incumbency, uh, given the fact that uh, the president, the candidate for the CPDM is the incumbent, the advantages that are accrue to that. And also, let's not forget, in a situation of presidential elections are quite different from legislative and other elections in the country, mm -hmm. where maybe in a party stronghold, if it were in uh, legislative elections or some municipal elections, you could uh, benefit from the support you enjoy within that particular area. But in presidential election, you must have a national appeal. I mean, we have some of these candidates mm -hmm. who, outside of their area, their stronghold, very few, very little is known about them. Mm -hmm. Very little, they have very little followers elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. But then, like they said, uh, it's true the advantage will go to the incumbent. Mm -hmm. But we are living at a time when uh, we've seen a lot of surprises. Let's not forget the power, the strength of the social media that's coming up right now. I, I just wanted to ask you that, but uh, 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 the, the, the legal mind is itchy to say something before I come back to yes. you. I'll come back to you, Joseph. Yes, not, uh, not law. I'll talk a bit of politics. Mm. We are looking, the question is, are, we, are there some surprises? Are we surprised mm. by the candidates? I think that what I personally I see interesting is the fact that we have 
new faces that are coming or new candidates. Mm. Um, I think that if I was in a position to advise the CPDM, I would have advised them to also match like the other parties. I think that if the CPDM brought up a different candidate, the surprises will again be more interesting. I will take an example. If you look at what happened in Zimbabwe, you see that at one point, it was becoming too clear that um, the time of Mugabe was getting out, but the party, I think, was smart enough to have done an internal revolution, made a change within the party, and you see that the party still works in strong, mm -hmm. which I thought that maybe would have been a tactic that could have been used by the CPDM. But I don't know. Um, uh, but the CPDM feels that their own candidate is still, is still the champion. Is still the champion and strong enough. Um, uh, what I'm saying, um, <laughs> by virtue of the fact that the party has a national appeal, appeal the party is implanted. I think that if they come up with a young, vibrant party, the party will even have stronger chances. Can be sorry. Mm -hmm. If they come up with a young, vibrant candidate, the party will even have stronger chances of winning the elections than now. It's okay. true. It's, it works. Let, 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 let me. I'll come back to you. I wanted to go to him because uh, there's this uh, aspect of uh, youth, yes. the youth, a youthful phenomenon within the current uh, group. Seven, uh, three of them are less than 40 years old. Certainly. And you could see that daring aspect on the part of the youth. Yeah. And I think uh, it's going to be uh, an issue too that may uh, change the status quo in the elections, even though it's going to be difficult in the case of Cameroon. I think two things will come to the fore. The uh, consciousness of the youths right now and uh, what political scientists talk about the political culture. I think political scientists had uh, identified three kinds of political culture, the subject, the parochial, and the partisan. Before now, people will go with what is the popular opinion. But with this kind of revolutions we've, ha we've had around, the challenges that we've had around, I mean, a good evidence, a good uh, example is the fact that with uh, the majority in schools uh, in the Northwest, they could not, uh, the CPDM could not win the senatorial elections. That's already an indication that there is a change in political culture, and let's see it in the case of uh, uh, presidential elections, where people don't want to just sit now and do what they think, well, we are indifferent, whatever comes our way, let's just do it. With the revolutions that we've had, with the challenges that we've had, people want to have their voices heard. And now the aspect of the youths coming in, we've seen it in other areas, maybe they'll be asking themselves, why don't we have our own Emmanuel Macron? Why don't we have an outsider like we saw in the case of the United States of America and uh, with uh, the likes of Cabral Libby when he launched his 11 million uh, 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 voters, even though it wasn't, a com it wasn't a success per se because we didn't have that, but at least he was able to appeal to the youths and it may come as a surprise the, that I, the youths rally the, behind the big, him. Uh, the big um, worry here is that um, even though he did what he did and... Uh, he might be appealing to those who don't have the arm to disarm. In other words, those who have not registered to vote. Not necessarily. The point is the government has been an offensive to get people registered and vote. Why has the government come to all this? It's because the government has been uh, disenfranchising voters in the past. That's why How? Because when you go to register, I've come, when, you come, when you cover elections, you'll see it. When you, when you go to register to vote, the day of the publication of the list, you're, you're, you register in Balade, you find yourself, maybe your, your card comes out maybe at BMRC 6. You don't know how to get your card. Is that, is that phenomenon still current with elections no, Cameroon? I'm, I'm trying to explain why Cabral came to call on people to vote. The government has been rectifying all of this, coming back to put the list where they are supposed to be and the cards where they are supposed to be picked. It, it has, this, all of this has hit, uh, say like pushed people to keep away from elections. And that's why, because if, when we reported a story, I think in 2004 or so, we discovered that the voters' registration was around 6 million or so, but the, the potential voters were around 10 million. And by now, they're supposed to be between 11 and 12 million. So the government has been trying to get to these figures to make sure that p more people vote. However, the voters' uh, participation has been a very key issue in elections in Cameroon because people, the government fears that some of the voters who may be disenfranchised during the voting process may revolt and then get maybe upset the, set, the, set, the, the, the system of the elections. Cabral Levy's major push to get people registered is that they become conscious when you vote, you have your voters card, you are going to vote and you can't vindicate your, 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 your candidate. That's the issue here. You can't vindicate your vote. Your vote, sorry. So the, the issue is that um, to go further, like uh, uh, um, Joseph, Joseph is, is saying, you need to get people vote 
People don't go to vote because they don't believe in the way the elections are organ organized. The dynamics in the American elections or in Zimbabwe or as we're going, maybe we may see that in Congo as well, is that people change opinion by the way the elections, the candidates appear and the who, who they are and how they will fight you know, to, to, to get the power changed. In Cameroon, people don't want to think about like having a new party. And the, those in government blow the trumpet of saying that we don't need another candidate, we don't need another candidate. But you turn, these people wear several jackets at the same time. They will turn around and say, but on <laughs> fair command. What are we going to do? Where you don't, where you don't have the, the, the candidate, you, you don't pronounce the candidate, but you, you still vote for the candidate you don't want, but you turn around and say, we are suffering. These are, this is the key problem in Cameroon. But w when you say what you say, uh, and you see what is happening within Elections Cameroon, don't you think that the dynamics being propelled by Elections Cameroon could push more voters, uh, like uh, Cabral Levy was saying, to, yes. to get registered and vote, uh, m make a choice? Like Joseph was saying, you see, in the U.S., Donald Trump came from nowhere and won. You know, people thought Hillary Clinton would win because those are the traditional candidates. Today in Cameroon, somewhere, if the elections go so smoothly without any interference, Kabbalah Libby or perhaps Osi, Osi, Osi Joshua can win. You have the moved away from the first names you, you first mentioned. No, okay. I, no I, I, is, is it dynamics? Because the yeah, one thing is that the youth, the, youth, exactly. the youth in Cameroon, I have to make it very, very, very it's very important to note that the youth in Cameroon are, fr are frustrated because our country seems divided into generations, the old and the young generations. Also, where where would you put the middle class? Um, uh, the, maybe, middle, uh, the middle age. The ruling party no. should not get too complacent. It's true they have the advantage, they have the, the implanted all through the national territory. But let me take you down to Boya in the southwest region. When uh, I'm talking about change in mentalities, when on a Monday, even with all measures put in place by the administration and the municipal authorities to get people to operate, to have their shops open, they still do not come out. Is it's it, true, is it, it is not fear? It is true, it is argued that it is fear. Uh -huh. But to the extent that municipal authorities seal shops and people still do not come out. They puncture the tires of taxis around who, uh, who uh, were expected to ply the roads and who did not come out. They still do not go to ply the roads on Mondays. Mentalities are changing. But I will not want to say it's complete fear. You will not want, okay. Uh, you were there, you were on the ground. I would want to argue with you. Now, yeah, it's um, fresh the, social, yeah. the social media phenomenon in this election, uh, Matute. Uh, yes, I think that it is going to be a very, very strong uh, weapon. It's going to be a very, very strong uh, weapon, and uh, that is why I think when Emmanuel was uh, making a point a moment ago, uh, I was uh, always uh, nodding, because you see... Uh, <laughs> you were always nodding. Uh, yes, Libby, okay. uh, Libby is uh, actually... Uh, I'm saying that it's just coming from the blues, but if you permit, it's just coming from the uh, from the blues because uh, the other candidates like Macron, Macron took time to implant himself to win national the national uh, uh, votes, yes, national uh, confidence. But that is where we have a problem in in Cameroon because people like Ali B might be popular among the young people, but he's not been there for uh, quite some time, and sometimes the mentality it, it takes some time to to change. But I think the uh, social media is doing uh, quite a lot. We'll, particular. we'll do something. We'll do something because mm. even... We'll play. Yes, mm -hmm. because if you go from the moment that the nine candidates were... The names of the nine uh, candidates were made uh, public, I think the social media had been in very, very serious uh, and work. And the incumbent... And, um, and even the incumbent uh, himself. Tweeted. Yes, tweeted. Uh, so. To... <laughs> To make uh, his intentions in, 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 in known, yes. is that not another push? Um, it was going well, with the time, the that was a uh, trigger. Uh, it was a trigger to show that uh, he himself is part of uh, the movement, <laughs> <laughs> the he, modern he generation. He might, that use, he might have made use of the Twitter platform, yeah. but like, when we look at candidates, I don't think uh, if we are talking of someone who really masters that particular platform, he would be the one I'd look at. The other younger persons in it, I mean, uh, the likes of Cabral, even Joshua C himself, have yeah. been making very good use of uh, the social media and. Uh, uh, with our understanding of what this can do, let's not forget gender setting functions and all the like. Okay. They can put an agenda in the minds of the young persons okay. and get them to work. That sounds them. interesting, but um, of late, religion has been a very strong point. 
uh, because of the crisis we are going through in the country, the insecurity and poverty. And there is one candidate who is so tied to that religious uh, factor, uh, who himself is uh, a preacher of uh, the gospel, um, uh, Pastor Ndifo. What do you think that religious factor can play in the in the ongoing uh, or the upcoming election? Yes, am I, I, right? I think our our politics is based more on the parties, the individuals who make the who, who come from these parties, like the head of state. He belongs to the CPDM, which is implanted all over the country. And you have also the SDF, which has similar char char characteristics. The religion in Cameroon is, is not based on politics. It is based more on frustration, because the economy has not been the best of all these years. So people look for solace to go to religion to get, you know, some um, um, soothing. Consolation. Yes, yeah, some consolation or soothing, so as to stay a little bit feel be, being part of the society, religion. Uh, the candidate of the of the of the uh, of the religious party, I mean, sorry, of the uh, uh, the pastor. For me, I don't think I don't I don't, I don't even know whether he will win some few votes because he's not even known. To start with, because to start with, the issue is he. If you were a, a religious candidate like Cardinal Tumi or maybe an imam who is very important within within our political setup. We could have seen that the religion would play a very big role. Others think otherwise, uh, Matute. No, I think just like em em Emmanuel was saying a moment ago, if he were a popular religious uh, figure, I think that it, it was going to, to make uh, quite some uh, difference. And uh, you know the uh, divide uh, between the the new preachers, the new generation of uh, preachers of uh, certain uh, uh, denominations against the old the old uh, traditional religion. Uh, traditional religion. So I don't see how people can easily be 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 moved to join the this new preacher because because it's uh, because he's, he's a pastor. And uh, again, even if they were to join him. Even if they, they join him, he would have been maybe one of those, like the one in Boya, would not want to call names, where I see people come from all parts of the country and they think that they can get magic solutions. Maybe if you were a figure of that mag magnitude, then people would think that maybe he is coming in with some... Uh, <laughs> some solutions, some magic, magic solutions. Solution. Just, just to add, his party was launched <laughs> in April. Yeah, you know um, <laughs> what you should also, or what I perceive. I think that generally in Africa we have this problem of uh, poverty pushing the population into political and religious fanatism. But again, those fanatisms are different. Poli religious fanatism is quite different from political fanatism. Mm -hmm. Like I say, poverty has actually pushed the ordinary man into these two forms of fanatism. But there's a clear cut line between religious and political fanatism. I believe yeah. that religion actually has a role to play. I mean, uh, it's one of those aspects where people usually hold very, very tenaciously to. A proof of it is the fact that uh, the government, unless somebody thinks otherwise, has not been completely successful in checking the proliferation of churches around because they know uh, the kind of effect it could have if you categorically took a vermin stand against uh, maybe the proliferation of some churches. But then, like they were saying, it's an individual, I'm talking about uh, Franklin and Fan 24, it's an individual whom we certainly, suddenly had the name just around the elections period. And uh, with recent developments around, we realize that in Cameroon, other issues have um, a stronger appeal to people than religion. No. A good example, like ethnicity and uh, uh, tribal background f have equally proven. Let's take the case of uh, maybe the churches around. We've heard people use certain words they would not have used in other contexts against venerated men of God, which was not the case before, which means that religion does not really have that strong hold on other people, like issues of ethnicity do. We've seen churches being pulled apart. I mean, even within the Cameroon Baptist Convention today, we are already hearing about a group of people who claim they are marginalized, and uh, some people have interpreted that on the grounds of ethnicity and uh, uh, tribal affiliations, okay. which are issues uh, that... Uh, those, uh, let, let me... Um, uh, Turn the question uh, the other way. Um, I'm sure you are a, a, a proponent of uh, the social media like I do. Uh, you know, when he launched uh, his party in, in, uh, in, in Douala, yeah. there was almost a commotion on the streets of Douala. That young man, 
Yes. Uh, and that appealed to uh, Christians or the, his followers across the country, those who buy his ideas. Certainly. Uh, let's not forget Douala is where he's based. If it were some uh, legislative election or municipal election, we might say, well, he may win a seat in parliament or something of that sort. We're talking about presidential elections. Okay. How many people will vote for him in the far north, in the north, in the... Now, uh, you, you, you talk so much about ethnicity, the appeal of ethnicity today within our context. And in the northern regions of our country, almost all the key political figures have queued up behind uh, the, the CPDM candidate. Uh, but for the ADD candidate, yes. do you see the ADD emerging from the three northern regions as the sole political chase uh, uh, dictator. A or name, uh, or you, you, you see, it's a popular mm -hmm. name over there. But when we look at the trends in the previous years, I mean, uh, in the last presidential elections, uh, 2011, he emerged in the third position. But when we look at the figures, actually, it was very insignificant. But really would, insignificant. But will that not, with the absence of the other? Uh, candidates from the northern uh, regions of the country not play in his favor. When we see other uh, elites from the northern regions who have rallied behind the ruling CPDM, I'm talking about the NUDP uh, 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 leader and the likes, they also have uh, a following over there which may uh, create that divide between. Let's not forget elites. that there are other candidates like Akeremona and Cabral Libi, OC, they are all traveling to other parts of the country, like still in the, far, in the Grand North, to campaign for votes. The idea, the issue is ethnicity is dying down in terms of voting in Cameroon. We are getting to a level where people, because of the influence of the social media, people are getting new ideas about who is who within, uh, the, in the political context. And so they may vote somebody else who may not come from a tribe. Or, a, or an any group. And again, I have the impression that uh, most of the time people like a Gaga and it's really usually mix, missing in action immediately after elections. Since 2011, honestly, I only got his name a couple of times when it comes to Kunak and uh, maybe corruption, N not on party, uh, maybe doing some party. Uh, <laughs> okay. Militarism is in the law. All right. Thank you very much. We'll be coming back to the barrister with the legal aspect concerning the uh, those who are uh, running for for office, the highest office of the land. Uh, let's turn to Elvis Teke. Good day. Hello, Joe. Um, we've had a good number of reactions on the two um, subjects uh, on discussion today. We begin with uh, Mary Kilachin. Um, she says that a person who doesn't think of peace is not of society and not of unity. And when she listen to the cardinal, and he might have his own way of transforming the conflict. And uh, Cameroonians should st work together to build a prosperous country and stop discrimination and tribalism. On the second subject, she, she says uh, presidential it is it is good, but I think out of how can eight opposition face one person means they have got great ideas, but it would be better if they work together. And statesman Lang said, in a sinking ship, any idea that can rescue the vessel cannot be taken for granted by the captain, even when that idea is coming from an underdog. So all individuals raising controversies of the man of God's convention as a platform towards returning to peace in the two Anglophone regions, they should think again. Why James MacDolph says if that the two are talking from the heart without government influence on, on either of them, I suggest that they agree and go ahead with the conference because it will be the beginning of the end to the senseless war in the two English-speaking regions. And Tam Ismail Amadu says uh, just like in other cases, African marginalization in football and other aspects, we should work together to contribute in building a young and emerging state. And the love for country must always surpass personal love. And on the second issue, he said, in our forests, uh, in our forest, the lion thinks he's always strong, but globalization strategies can be used to die down such supremacies. And we end with Ndange Bernard Kumfua, who says, despite everything, we should give peace a chance. The Northwest and Southwest are losing so many governments and private structures. Thank you very much, uh, Elvis. Thank I you. want to turn to you, Barista. What do you make of the petitions that were filed in? Are they strong enough? Um, I listen with keen, uh, keen attention um, the petitions that have been filed, at least the summary 
on the radio. Um, it's true, the members, there's a respect of time frame because uh, upon the publication of the list, uh, those who had to contest had two days to file their petitions, which they did within time. So I think uh, on the issue of time constraint, those petitions will be rece receivable. But now the other aspect will also be lo the local standard. Uh, do you have the quality? Do you have the right person to petition? I think most of the petitioners um, are the right persons because the law says that a candidate, interested parties, interested parties or candidate can petition. Now, but when I look at the a summary matter. of the substantive, the merits, I begin to doubt because, I, for example, there's somebody whose petition is based on the fact that he didn't pay 30 million francs, but he signed an engagement that he will pay that 30 million francs. <laughs> For me, that is that is a, a petition that will be rejected. It will be outright uh, rejected you, because the law says you paid before. You don't take an engagement to pay. And some other petition, some other petitioner indicated that, um, I think a lady, that she has been called by God and uh, she is a right person to lead Cameroon. Again, a call from God is not one of the conditions uh, stipulated by law to pose your candidacy. So I'm sure it's true. I'm not uh, diving into cases that are pending before the court. Let's wait and see the rapporteurs who do their job and then the yes, cases uh, will be there was one in interesting court. Uh, petition there about um, uh, the order of names. Yes, yeah, the order of names. It is also, I think for me, I think that, that, uh, that's, uh, that is another vain uh, petition. Okay. Because I mean, Bia, Paul, Paul, Bia, all we know that is the same person. Okay. Now, I, I want to ask you this last question, and I want your, your opinions on uh, this. What has guided a voter's choice in the past, and what could guide voter's choice on October the 7th? Emmanuel. It has moved from one, uh, one issue to another. Um, in the early 90s, Cameroon was not as poor. Although Cameroon has suffered from an economic crisis caused by the, uh, you know, the, um, the uprisings, uh, which grounded several industries in the country. But and the slum in oil prices. Yeah, by that period, I think Cameroon was not producing so much oil at the time. Uh, I mean they, now? Yeah, Cameroon is producing a lot of, quite a well, the about the 100,000. The slum in oil prices now <coughs> has hit the country. As as no, it has, it has increased a bit. Oil prices should be between, I think it's around seven, seven, seventy dollars now. It should be between $70 and $80. At first it was around 40 40 to 50 dollars that's not bad you're from the wall street, uh, wall street journal yeah, so. we report on that every day <laughs> it's true the okay. issue the issue is that um at, at a given point you know in the 90s where there was rumor that Funi had won the election many people were feeling that there was going to be a major change today we are seeing that what well, the, the, the the electoral body which was the interior minister of cameroon annulled the elections in favor of um um, thrown there and gave it to the, uh, the, the uh, incoming president that's the head of state. No, they did not, no, no. They did not <laughs> Well, uh, well. <laughs> okay. okay, let me. Uh, let me. Uh, you, you are not going very fast. Okay. <laughs> maybe one last word. No, I was just going to say that uh, maybe that would be for another program, but uh, if the opposition uh, thinks of uh, ever really uh, challenging the incumbent, uh, the only way for me would be to come together. Okay. The very yes. strong personality called around the president, I'm talking of Mr. Paul Bia, is uh, that which makes it practically impossible for others. When we see uh, the kind of parliament we have when uh, the supposed representatives of the people will not oppose to uh, I mean, an amendment of the constitution to perpetuate one person's stay in power, I mean, which means those who benefit from the system want to preserve the status quo. It looks like a youth indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I think that in 1990, there was that zeal, that uh, strong zeal, because there was a, people foresaw a change. So people vote because they were expecting a change. But now, I'm sure that Cameroonians are discouraged. They don't see... They the want to vote for experience. They don't, yeah, they don't even want to. I mean, they're they are voting now for the sake of voting. I think they're voting now okay. for the sake of, for sake of voting. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there wasn't any lady on set, so gentlemen, thank you for being with us on the program. They were looking forward to being with you again same time next week. Stay with us if you can. Sometime we can be following shortly. There.